This is Solar PV TV from Dubai once again from the Desert Energy Leadership Summit. And we have a pleasure to speak with Paul uh, Vonson, uh, who is CEO of the initiative and uh, the person who a couple of years ago had a dream to create a big project uh, for creating renewable energies in Africa and bring to Europe. But since then, the project a bit evaluated. And I would like to ask you, Paul, at the beginning, just to give us a bit more overview of the history, how your dream uh, appeared and where we are today, actually. Yeah, thank you very much for this question. I mean, uh, we, you, you asked actually to go back to 2009. We are today in 2016. In 2009, there was a wave from uh, scientists and, 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 and people in Germany uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, to produce electricity in the desert and to bring it to Europe or to, to Germany. And uh, they, they asked me in 2009 to, to lead this initiative. It was actually with uh, a couple of companies like uh, Siemens and uh, ABB and uh, uh, E.ON and RWE and uh, Munich Re and many other companies in Germany. So huge companies. So absolutely uh, huge companies, DAX uh, companies, uh, were the, the biggest in uh, Germany. And there was one uh, uh, company in Spain, uh, in uh, developer Abengoa, and one company in Algeria. So then they, they started and they asked me to, to, to develop this. Integrate. To integrate. And uh, I started in uh, the, uh, the 1st of June, uh, November in 2009. And then we started to, to examine, to, to investigate really what, what can be done. So the, the, the initial idea was to focus on large uh, power plants, uh, concentrated solar power, so, uh, and then uh, build cables to Europe and to bring the electricity to Europe. But very soon we, we found out that this, that idea is not so very smart. Uh, because you know, Paul, honestly speaking, there was a lot of, let's say, different discussions about, about uh, Desertex. So there were people saying that it's an utopic idea, other people that it was more like PR of big companies, which actually at the end of the day didn't want really to make it happen. And uh, I think that now it's more realistic, yes, actually. Yes. I, I think you're right. At the beginning, it was utopic. Uh, and that's what we also found out when we were sitting with teams together and also with, with institutions like Fraunhofer uh, Institution and with the SESI in Italy and with the uh, universities in Spain and so on. Then we found out that this original idea was a little bit utopic and maybe also a little bit too much selfish on Europe, yeah. That to to have in the in the focus on ele electricity for yourself is not the right starting point. The starting point should be first to to take care that the the, the local, the regional electricity supply is sound and that it is stable and that the the prices, the costs are low for the people. So uh, we we changed that about the big companies. Uh, what we did in the very soon is to attract smaller companies. We had, like, for instance, in, uh, in, in Mauritania, where Mauri Soler is a small developer, and we have other companies that are much smaller. And at, 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 as you see today, it's a balance of large and small companies, like life is. It is not uh, only the big companies is not the right thing, only small companies is maybe also not the right thing. This mix is very, make it very strong. But mainly, also, uh, maybe also, this is due to the fact that uh, especially solar PV became uh, so accessible now in terms of the prices. Yeah? Because in 2009, uh, if you remember, maybe solar PV was like 10 times more expensive than today, yes? Yes. Yeah, and, and when we started in 2009, the, the, the price per kilowatt hour uh, of uh, production from uh, solar PV was something like 30 cents, euro cents, mm -hmm. and CSP was something like 25 euro cents. So CSP was uh, yeah. cheaper. That's why it was a choice. Yeah. Yes, and uh, if you look today, then uh, today's CSP would be something like uh, 14, 15 cents, and PV, as you say correctly, is uh, like... Uh, 2.4 or 2.5 or maybe 3 cents. So you're right, it's a factor 10 almost. Yes, and it also shows that uh, we can make, make more uh, decentralized system. Yeah? Yes, the, the, by, by definition, the very, very uh, fast movement is by small decentralized system, rooftop mm -hmm. or small uh, PV plants, but also large plants. Now, in, uh, like in Dubai, in, uh, uh, 
in Abu Dhabi, in, in um, Morocco, uh, there are projects going on up to 1,000 megawatt of PV. Yes, exactly. So uh, you, you have decentralized, but also centralized. Uh, so we see now the, the, the bottom-up movements, small wind parks, PV, small CSP, uh, and that kind of thing, small hydro with rivers. And uh, you see the big uh, uh, developments, large plants, CSP, like uh, 100, 200, uh, and so on. Uh, PV and wind parks, like in Egypt, in Morocco, you see wind parks with the size of 800 megawatts. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's, what becomes very important is the grid, electrical grid, to connect countries, uh, to level out uh, different patterns in country, countries and also we, what we will see more and more is uh, storage mm -hmm. not not on the in the first place electrical storage but also storage in uh, like heat and cold storage mm -hmm. especially cold storage in very warm uh, areas is very interesting because you can, with very cheap pv you can produce ice for instance during the day for the use the cooling in the evening and in the night exactly. So we, 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 what we are able now is to level the, the, the supply and the demand much better than before. Exactly. And uh, I would like to ask you, because uh, you became uh, also recently uh, chairman for energy in uh, the Minat region. And you are based now in Dubai, of course. And I would like to ask you, because you are also since, uh, I think, like 16 years yes, in renewable energies. So how would you compare, uh, compare your beginnings, let's say, in renewables and now working for Energy, which uh, was just valued over 20 billion on the stock exchange? Well, I don't care how big a company is uh, because I do the same work. Uh, and uh, in, uh, of course, in DII, the work was more paving the way. So uh, facilitating the markets in RWE, which is now Energy. My job is to create projects where we can invest and develop and then earn our, our money. And that is, uh, we focus on uh, solar projects, uh, wind projects, and then also the grid adaptation. So that the, the, the strong point of energy is that they have the qualification in the production, but also in the, the grid and also in demand side, so energy saving and demand uh, control, demand side management. And uh, in terms of, uh, let's say, political discussions, how do you observe the change in the political minds of people? Yeah, I mean, the, uh, the, the political, I think that in the beginning, years ago, the, 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 the cost of renewables was very high. So then you need really missionaries, people with a strong vision, like uh, Hans Josef Fell, for instance, the people that, ha that look many years in the future. Uh, so there are, and, uh, and it's very difficult because these people are, will not be believed, the, people, the, the, the average politician, they have other interests. Uh, mainly a short term. Yeah. Short term interest and interest from the local, uh, the, the, the present industry. But now, we are now seven years later, the renewables is competitive. So the, you see that now the politicians are uh, directly related to this business because it is a real life competitive uh, uh, affair. So we, we do not see any uh, road blockers from the politicians anymore, uh, maybe very few, but uh, the, the, the mainstream of the politics, they, they support this. And we have the, the COP21, the COP22 this, uh, this week. So the environment is positive. The environment is completely different. Uh, today, uh, it is, uh, I think, the mainstream of the politics worldwide to go for the renewables, to go for energy efficiency, to go for uh, connecting the countries uh, with grids. Uh, that was a little bit different uh, seven years ago. So, uh, last question about uh, the future, not of the world, which will be for sure renewable, but the future of uh, DII. Well, I think DII, the, um, the market will uh, get more and more used to your renewables. The renewables are, uh, as they are getting cheaper and cheaper, a uh, uh, sort of self-propelling uh, uh, technology. So DII, uh, for the time being, does not need to do a lot on the pure technology. So what we uh, are now shifting to is more the grid integration and to open up electricity markets so that there is a realistic and transparent pricing that uh, supply and demand fits together. 
So the AI will move into that area, uh, but how it will be like in three or five years, we, I'm quite sure that we have to change our mind again. We, we have to go uh, with the needs of the market. Okay, but you mentioned, I wanted to give you before the last question, but you mentioned Hans Josef Fell. Actually, Hans Josef Fell is now promoting the idea of 100% renewables in the world. Do you think is it an utopic idea or is it realistic? No, 100% uh, that will happen and that is also our objective. This morning in the conference, you, uh, uh, I already showed one sheet where I show, I, I, I demonstrate to the audience that it is very much possible with PV, with CSP, with wind, with hydro, maybe a little bit biomass, maybe waste to energy, and with electrical grids, and with storage, and with control systems to make 100% uh, renewables. And we, we can see it in some countries today. There are countries like yeah, countries. Norway, Costa Rica, uh, Denmark is going in the direction. And, and there are more and more countries in the world that, that uh, move to a very, very high percentage of renewables. And do you think also that the countries in your region, actually, in Minat's region, they can also go to 100%? They will be the first to do this because it, it is the cheapest option. If, if PV is only a few cents per kilowatt hour, go for it. If you need the, the, the electricity during the days at the time that there is no sunshine, connect with neighbors uh, uh, more in other time zones or uh, 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 make use of storage. Uh, and so th th this is something and what you can also do is to connect with your demand, like electrical cars. They can load during the day and use in the evening and the night. So there will be a completely resyncing of... Complete shift. Of shift, yeah, resyncing and the shift of the demand uh, in the direction of the, uh, of the power supply during the sunshine hours. Okay, so uh, there is a proof, yeah? there is a lot of sunshine actually in the, in the region. And uh, thank you so much, Paul. Uh, you are one of the people who will be helping this region to get 100%. Yes. And best regards to Hans Josef Fell. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. That was Solar PVTV together with uh, CEO of DII Initiative, one of the founders of the initiative, and also chairman of uh, the Minat region for Inogy here in Dubai. Thanks for watching.